Hey there, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Group, and in this video, I'll be reviewing a bit of tech that I bet you all use every day but may not think about all that much, and that is flash memory. Back at CES 2020, I met up with the good folks at Kingston, and one of the things they were most proud of was their brand new line of SD and micro SD flash cards that they were about to introduce. And I said, hey, you know what? That's actually pretty interesting to me because, of course, I use flash memory in my camera, for example, the one I'm using right now. And, you know, I've got a pretty good way of testing it because I use this stuff all the time. So, why don't you send me what you got when this stuff gets released and I'll be happy to put up a video. So sure enough, Kingston came through and they didn't just send me one sample. They sent me the entire lineup of SD and micro SD cards, three different families for really three different uses, different capacities, and of course the two formats, SD and micro SD. So Kingston's been a leader in this arena for a very long time, but they're not the only ones, of course. So I will be pitting them against some of the best sellers from their competitors, Samsung, SanDisk, and Lexar. And frankly, just to remind you, this stuff is used in so many different products, from the camera I'm shooting this on to my DSLR here, drone photography, GoPro photography, Android smartphones, laptops, you name it. It can be used in so many different products. And I bet some of you are always probably digging through drawers like I am, looking for a free SD or micro SD card when you get a new piece of technology that requires flash memory. But not all flash memory is made equal. And one of the things I'll be discussing in this video is all the various standards that are constantly changing. And yes, products are constantly improving, but there is a little bit of confusion in the various speed ratings, the interface ratings, the read-write ratings. So I will be going over that in this video to kind of clear the air and all of that, and then see how Kingston's products line up with all those speed ratings and as well as their competitors, and talk about where their best applications are, because in fact, some of the cards may be better at, for instance, digital photography, while others might be better for running applications on your laptop or your smartphone. So I'll be discussing all that in my video. So without further ado, let's take a look at the products I have here on the bench, and then I'll get into the benchmarks. I'll catch you in a minute. So as I mentioned, Kingston has released three new families of flash memory cards, the Canvas Select Plus, the Canvas Go Plus, and then the top end Canvas React Plus in both SD and micro SD formats. Now let's go over the various speed class ratings so we know what kind of products we're working with. First of all, I should note that while a lot of cards are marketed with a read rating, like say 300 megabytes per second or 100 megabytes per second, those are essentially meaningless and they are not an official speed rating. All official speed ratings are based on the minimum sequential write speed, not the read speed. So as you can see, the original speed classes went from C2 to C10 for 2 to 10 megabytes per second write speed. That was superseded by the UHS speed class, which was frankly duplicative. U1 and U3 could have just been C10 and C30. I don't know why the SD card consortium came up with that, but now all cards need to be emblazoned with both the C and the U rating, which is frankly ridiculous. We now also have the video speed class, V6 to V90, which overlaps obviously with the previous speed classes we have, and now all cards need all three ratings written on them. And one thing I should note is that the SD card consortium, which put together this graphic, says that you can use a U1 or a V10 card for 4K video, which is frankly baloney. I have tried it, it won't work. My video camera is a 4K camera. You cannot put a U1 or a V10 card in there and expect to shoot 4K video at 30 frames per second. So this is kind of just made up. Now let's turn our attention to the graph on the right hand side of the screen. This is the bus speed rating and it is distinct from the speed class rating. This is a rating of how quickly data can be transferred from the card to the host device and it really does have to do with the interface. So you need both the interface on the card and on your reader. It is distinct, like I said, from the speed class rating which is actually a rating of the memory inside the card. So one is really the internals of the card and one is the externals of the card. But what's so important about the UHS speed rating is that it has to be matched. You can't have a UHS 2 card and a UHS 1 reader and expect to get the advantages of UHS 2. Now let's turn our attention to the bottom of the screen where we see the application performance class. Thankfully there are only two classes so far but you can be sure there'll be many more down the line. These are very different speed rating because they incorporate both minimum random read and minimum random write speeds which are really important for running applications as you might do on your smartphone off of a micro SD card. 
The typical sequential read speed that is emblazoned on so many packages has very little to do with application performance. And frankly, sequential write doesn't have much to do with application performance either, but they wanted to fit that in because the SD card consortium has relied on that for so many decades. Making matters even more confusing is that most older cards, including this Lexar Professional card, had an X speed rating, which was based, believe it or not, on the speed of the very first CD-ROMs to hit the market in the early 1990s. Yes, that's 30 years ago. They were 150 kilobytes per second, and so a thousand times that is 150 megabytes per second, as written here as well, so you don't need an X speed rating at all. All right, folks, lessons over. Time to get into some benchmarks. I'm going to start with Crystal Disk Mark. This is a benchmark you will see all over the internet. People love to post this benchmark, and I'm just going to show you a screenshot of what it looks like here. This is actually a screenshot of the Kingston React Plus, the fastest card I tested. And you'll see this screenshot or this type of screenshot all over the internet, like I said. So you can download this program as well and test your SD cards if you'd like to. Now, looking from left to right, the SanDisk Ultra is still sold. It should not be. It's really a piece of junk. Um, but hey, SanDisk is a big name. That's a $10 card and it's basically worthless. But I have that there as a baseline. Now, I'm going to jump ahead uh, to the Kingston offerings and specifically the Kingston Select Plus 64 gigabyte. I should note that a lot of 64 gigabyte cards today will suffer greatly when it comes to sequential write because they don't have enough write lanes to support really high speeds. So be aware that when you see a speed rating, even a write speed rating, it may apply only to the larger capacity cards. And so the Kingston Select Plus 64 gigabyte micro SD card I have suffers greatly when it comes to sequential write speeds. It's barely faster than the SanDisk Ultra, and that's because of that 64 gigabyte speed. If we move over to the Kingston Select Plus 128 gigabyte model, that's an SD card, it's much, much faster and actually comparable to the SanDisk Extreme Pro. And interestingly, just about the same price despite being double the capacity. Now, I want to just talk about the Kingston React Plus cards for a minute in this test. They are unbelievably fast. They open up whole new opportunities for people who need very, very high sequential speeds. But they are extraordinarily expensive. And I'll be discussing price performance a little bit later in this review. Yes, they are extremely fast. But no, I wouldn't necessarily recommend them for most people. And I'll tell you why. Um, you really don't need this kind of speed unless you have a device that can really take advantage of it. Let me just point your attention to the last set of bars on this graph. This is the fastest card being tested in a standard USB 3.0 reader, actually from Kingston. It is limited to about 86 megabytes per second. All right, and I did similar tests on my laptop, which I'll show you in a minute, and it was even slower. So if you are not using a high-speed reader, you will not get the high-speed throughput of the React Plus card. You have to use the reader it's bundled with. That's part of the reason it's actually so expensive. But it does cut down on the convenience. You can't use the built-in readers you have in your PCs, your laptops, and certainly your smartphones. There's no way they can achieve that kind of sequential speed. That is reserved for a dedicated high-speed card reader. The cards that I like the most in this chart are actually the Kingston Go Plus cards particularly the micro SD. It is extraordinarily fast at 186 megabytes per second read and 129 megabytes per second write. And it actually is quite affordable as I'll be mentioning later when I get to price performance. That is probably my favorite card. And actually as an overall theme of today's test, I actually like micro SD cards much more than SD cards at this point. They are typically cheaper. They of course work in many more applications including smartphones and they really don't sacrifice speed at all. So at this point in time, in 2020, I don't see any reason to recommend a full-size SD card to anyone. Frankly, you don't need it. Even that Kingston React Plus all the way on the right side that is so fast, it actually costs a lot more than the micro SD version. And I don't think it's worth it just to get that slightly faster uh, write speed. 99% of people can just pick up the micro SD card version of any of these on the chart, use the bundled adapter, and you're good to go. Remember how I said you shouldn't be buying the fastest cards for your smartphones, at least not based on their sequential speeds? Well, here's the proof. Look at how my Galaxy S9 is completely bottlenecking all of these cards at about 85 megabytes per second or less. 
and even the write speeds are sacrificed considerably. Remember that Kingston React Plus on the right side can actually achieve over 200 megabytes per second write if you have the correct adapter. But in my Galaxy S9 smartphone, it doesn't even come close. And frankly, it doesn't matter. You don't need sequential speeds for a smartphone. If you're using this in a smartphone, probably you're storing photos or video. They aren't requiring that much bandwidth and you can't do much about the limited bandwidth of your interface anyway. But the good news is some of these cards have really, really great random read and random write speeds, which is what you want if you're running apps off your micro SD card. I want you to focus your attention on the Kingston Go Plus 128 gigabyte card. I love this card for app use in a smartphone, it is actually better than the much, much more expensive React Plus. We're talking like a five-fold difference in price. If you're using this for apps on your smartphone, that's the card to get. It blows away everything else on the chart when it comes to the random read and random write speeds that are extremely important for application performance. It's the only card to consider. Let's move back to the desktop to show you my real-world 4K video transfer times. Now, these are the benchmarks I really care about as a content creator. I transfer 10 to 20 gigabyte files all the time, and that can take 5, 10 minutes a piece. It's a huge pain, and what Kingston is offering with its React Plus cards in particular is pretty amazing and compelling to me. But again, these are really expensive cards, and, and I will talk about that in a moment. Uh, I think that the Kingston Go Plus cards are really quite good here. If you're doing a lot of 4K video and you need to transfer files, uh, and that's where you're looking at the sequential read. That's really the only time sequential read matters. Most of the time you're doing writes to your card when it's in your camera. And there's no problem with the Kingston Go Plus. Note that it is actually a lot faster than even the Lexar Professional 1000X card, which costs quite a bit more. And it easily puts to shame the Samsung Evo Select, which is a good card for the price and the top selling card on the market, but it does not compare to the Kingston Go Plus. The Kingston Go Plus is 50% faster, costs about 50% more. That's a good investment if you do a lot of 4K video. Now I want to issue this caution once more that you absolutely need a high speed reader to take advantage of these cards. Notice the Kingston React Plus in my laptop's built in micro SD card reader. It's completely bottlenecked at 80 megabytes per second. And this would be a huge pain for me when I'm traveling and producing 4K videos if I have to pull hundreds of gigabytes of files off of these cards, it will take me forever using my laptop's built-in reader. I need to carry Kingston's bundled reader if I'm going to use that React Plus card. And the same goes for the Go Plus. It's going to far exceed the speed of most built-in readers, and yet it doesn't come with a reader. You're going to have to invest in one. That's an extra 10 to $20. All right, let's talk price performance. This is where things get really interesting really fast. I used the average read-write speed that I attained using my video transfer test. That was a real-world test, so these are real-world performance metrics. And we can see very quickly that the Kingston React Plus falls all the way to the bottom of the heap when it comes to price performance, and that is because they are so expensive. So in the orange bars here, I've shown you the price. The React Plus 128GB SD card is a whopping $155 and I think it is very hard to make a case for that card, particularly given that the micro SD version is about $20 cheaper. But honestly, for most folks, I don't think these cards are worth it. Save $100, $120 even, and go with the Kingston Go Plus micro SD card, which you can see nearly at the other end of the spectrum. It comes in with an average read-write speed of 143 megabytes per second, and yet costs only 30 bucks. It's a fantastic value. And right behind it is the Samsung Evo Select, which is the top selling card on the market. I've used it for a long time. It's been very reliable, but at $20 and 88 megabytes per second average read-write, it really pales in comparison. Yes, it's cheaper, but it's a whole lot slower. And that brings me to my recommendations. Kingston has done a lot with its new Canvas line of flash cards, but not all of them are winners. Let me focus on the ones I really like. At $10, the value pick Kingston Select Plus 64 gigabyte micro SD card. No, it's not that fast, but it's faster than the top selling card at this price point, the SanDisk Ultra. There's no reason to buy that SanDisk card anymore. Kingston Select Plus is superior. Now the Kingston Select Plus in 128 gigabytes is just too expensive. It only matches the price and performance 
of the top selling Samsung Evo Select. Sorry, Kingston, you don't get an award for just matching your competitor's two-year-old card. But for another $10, the Canvas Go Plus is a fantastic card. It's 50% faster. And yes, if you're looking for something that's a little bit more future-proof, it's a good investment. It's also by far the best pick for anyone who's looking to run apps off a of flash card in their Android smartphone. Moving on up, well, you're going to have to spend four to five times as much. And this is for just the 1% out there who need that extreme performance. The React Plus is an incredible card. I only recommend the micro SD version because the full SD version is actually quite a bit more expensive and not really any faster. And you can't use it in as many devices. So it's a no-go from my point of view. So these three cards get my recommendations. I still like Samsung's Evo Select for 20 bucks, but other than that, Kingston has wrapped it up. Congratulations, Kingston. You have definitely shown your competitors what to shoot for. You're the new standard in micro SD cards for 2020. If you like this video, please do like and subscribe and I will catch you soon.